in chapter 14, Paul is going to address the order in which the gifts of the Spirit have to be exercised. So Paul is continuing from where he left. We, he talked about the, the, the need for genuine love in the exercise of the gifts of the Spirit. And he's saying, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So what we understand from here is that while Paul is telling everybody to pursue love, he's also telling everybody to desire spiritual gifts. Notice how Paul says, desire spiritual gifts, but he doesn't put any limits on it. So which again tells us that we can desire as many gifts as we want. And when we speak in tongues, what we're doing is we're speaking mysteries unto God, meaning the things that are being communicated are bypassing our mind. They are mysteries. Our mind does not understand what we are saying, but we are speaking to God uh, and, and the prayer is being made. Whenever a word of prophecy is released, the expectation is that it will, it will bless and it will build up the spiritual life of someone. Prophecy is for uh, exhortation. It's for edification. When we pray, when we speak in tongues in a congregation setting or in a gathering, then it is important for that to be interpreted. But here, Paul is talking about tongues that we call as a sign to the unbeliever. What is this kind of tongues? You know, sometimes when we, we, we are led by the Spirit and we pray uh, in an unknown language, what happens is uh, that people around us, an unbeliever or someone who does not know God, he or she might hear a message or they might receive a word from God directing them to Jesus. Without interpretation, when we speak that tongues or let's say personal edification uh, tongues where the unbeliever who comes in, he has no clue. And he's wondering what are these languages people are talking in. But if we prophesy, what happens? You know, uh, they hear a word, the unbeliever gets a word from God and is amazed. Now, how does this person know? And it's only God uh, who's all knowing. And God reveals this to us. Why? So that the unbeliever feels the love of God. And the unbeliever uh, is like, oh, wow, in, in this huge universe, in this world, there is a God who knows me. There is a God who knows my thoughts. And God is revealing this to uh, this person who's praying for me. Paul has very clearly encouraged us to use the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, and he is giving instructions so that the use of the spirits, uh, the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit are done in an orderly uh, and a decent manner. Very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he does not forbid women from prophesying, singing in church, which is why Paul is saying, so wives keep silent. If you need to ask something, you can ask your husbands, but uh, kindly do that after the meeting is over so that the progress of the gathering is not disrupted. Okay, so that is the context in which Paul is asking women to keep silent. The gifts of the spirit must be exercised. We have to be zealous to flow in the gifts of the spirit because it will benefit others. It will bless the body of Christ. It will edify the body of Christ. But in doing this, he's saying, let all things be done in order. So things have to be done, but they have to be done in order.